Hello blog readers, this is Key Rose with another video podcast and uh, today we have a uh, special guest here with us. We have uh, Dr. Elsa Canales, she's a local gastroenterologist. Uh, Dr. Canales, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And um, I got a call uh, from my friends here at the Laredo Digestive Health Center. Uh, they've been here uh, for three years and they really wanted uh, to talk to me about um, colon health, uh, digestive health, uh, and uh, uh, here at this uh, clinic in uh, North Laredo along with Pearson, they've been here uh, doing their work for the last three years. Um, Dr. Canales, can you tell us a little bit about the kinds of patients that you see and the kinds of procedures that you do and the type of screening? Yes, our, uh, here at Laredo Digestive Health Center, uh, we uh, perform all uh, types of procedures for gastroenterologists, endoscopies, upper endoscopies, lower endoscopies, which are called colonoscopies. Uh, we do some other specialized um, procedures uh, for liver patients, uh, but it's a very uh, general gastroenterology practice. Um, we, uh, the, the majority of our work uh, is done with basic endoscopy and colonoscopy so we do a lot of colon cancer screening at our center and the patients that come to our clinic are patients uh, that come referred to us from other primary doctors in our community and patients that uh, seek care through our clinic uh, to get their procedures done so and you mentioned that the doctor refers you uh, you know to the clinic but uh, I, I think I heard that you can also self refer yourself to come and get screened. Right. right? Many years ago, uh, that basically I think comes down to an issue of insurance. Many years ago, insurances used to be more, um, um, uh, it, it was more difficult for a patient to refer themselves, but nowadays patients are able to refer themselves to a specialist and not just us but other specialists so uh, patients have that benefit now rarely do we find insurances that keep their patients from referring themselves now uh, I think the age group that you deal with is uh, starting from 16 up to uh, 16 years up right um, I guess we'll start with like the endoscopies that's where you put a camera down into the esophagus through the esophagus down into the stomach uh, uh, to check for uh, infections, inflammation of the stomach, of the esophagus, things like that? Yes. When a, uh, it's a very commonly uh, procedure, it's a very commonly done procedure, and it's for upper gastrointestinal disorders, uh, for up upper abdominal pain, anybody that has chronic heartburn or reflux, uh, trouble eating, trouble swallowing, unexpected weight loss, Anything, anything that tells you that the patient may have an upper gastrointestinal problem, that's what the, what the endoscopy is for. For those, you'll see some type of symptom, like you said, the, 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 the bloating or the, the pain, mm -hmm. the indigestion, things like that. Yes. Uh, in talking about the lower intestine, the, the colon, uh, with those, do you see the same types of uh, symptoms, complaints, or is it more of a, something that you know, just, they just come for screenings because of something else? I would say both. Um, we get, because colon cancer screening uh, is very routine at the age of 50 uh, for, for the average risk patient and it's uh, routine for other patients at an earlier age, patients can come without any symptoms. Uh, so we do spend some of our time with that, but some colon symptoms that can alert you to something wrong is a patient that's having bleeding, weight loss, anemia sudden bowel habit changes, uh, trouble with abdominal pain that just doesn't go away. Uh, those are symptoms that uh, key us into that there could be something wrong with the colon. But again, uh, the colonoscopy can be done just for screening, that is without any symptoms. And uh, do you do more of one procedure than the other one? Do you do more colonoscopies than endoscopies? or? Uh, it, um, here at the center, we probably do more colonoscopies than endoscopies. Probably so, yes. And like, what, what are you finding? Like, with somebody who maybe just comes in because maybe they're anemic or something like that, uh, I, I think uh, one of the things that was mentioned that you might find polyps right. or li little growths along the, the colon. Uh -huh. uh, what, what, what do you do with those? So polyps are actually tumors. They're benign tumors and they are growing inside a person's intestine on the inside surface of the intestine 
and uh, those there are certain types of polyps called adenomas that can actually turn into a cancer. They're precancerous lesions, but those are very slow growing and they take years to form a cancer. It's a thought that maybe one small polyp can take about seven to ten years to grow into a cancer. And so um, along that time, the patient doesn't have any symptoms. So when we find them, uh, we remove them. Uh, they're not supposed to be there, so we're prepared here in our center to remove them. And there are several techniques that we use to remove them. Uh, the way we decide how to remove them um, depends on the size, on the location of the polyp, um, mainly the size and the location. That's how we choose what equipment we're going to use to remove them. Now, uh, is there like a reluctance you find on the part of the patient? Like, uh, because I know that, like, uh, you know, there, there's some apprehension in coming to get that test because of maybe the pri a privacy issue or something like that. But like, once you find something like that, maybe a polyp or diverticulitis, you're of course going to make suggestions in making like dietary changes, lifestyle changes, and things like that. I mean, what 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 are the big problems that you see with, let's say, men? Uh, and getting screened and, and making changes. Like uh -huh. uh, I could say that the most common reason that men uh, don't come is because of the um, that they they feel shy or they feel embarrassed to do it. And what we always try to explain to them is uh, what I always tell my male patients is that they should be glad they're doing this. This is something to keep them healthy. We have a uh, here at Laredo Dig Digestive Health Center. We are very proud to provide uh, top-notch equipment, top-notch service, um, nursing staff that has been doing uh, these procedures for many, many years, very experienced nurses. So uh, the, 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 the care that the person gets, whether a male or a female, very personalized. And this is, you know, what we do. Unfortunately, it requires a procedure to, to take care of your colon but this is something that needs to be done and we try to express to the patient, especially male patients, that it's just a short while, that they may feel embarrassed, uh, but it's good for their health. It's something very good for their health. And also, um, the patient is very comfortable during the procedure. The sedative that's provided here at our center, the sedation is uh, beautifully administered. The patient is very, very comfortable. Very rare do we have a complaint from a patient that they weren't, you know, asleep enough or comfortable enough. So we really uh, strive on keeping our patients very comfortable during the procedures. For somebody who wants to avoid all these problems, you know, gastritis, uh, colon cancer, you know, something like that, uh, fiber is a mm -hmm. big thing. Uh, right. Dietary uh, habits that really can go a long way. Right. right. Uh, eating, we promote eating uh, healthy, uh, which means high fiber diet. Uh, which um, means eating two fruits a day throughout your day, accompanying your lunch and your dinner with vegetables, hopefully two portions of vegetables if not one portion. Uh, sometimes people get stuck on trying to choose the vegetables that are the highest fiber or the fruits that are highest fiber, but all we want, all we tell our patients is just, just pick colors, different colors and a variety, and all of them are good. All fruits and vegetables have, you know, specific nutritional properties that are good so just if the patient balances it that way and also other things like avoiding um, uh, other uh, things that people do to themselves smoking drinking alcohol uh, all of those things are not good it's okay if I guess if you do it in with some mild moderation but um, that doing that promotes you to have these gastritis symptoms, colon cancer, colon polyps, so we ask patients to stay away from those hazards, eat low fat, things like that. What about the uh, flaming hot Cheetos? No. Are those, are those uh, considered a vegetable? <laughs> They're not considered They're not. a vegetable. They're considered empty nutrition, <laughs> empty calories, yeah. high calories, but empty calories. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that, um, that our youngsters and even adults eat them and, and they just, people can't, don't eat them in moderation. I guess if you eat five little Cheetos, nothing, not bad, but people eat bags of the Flaming Hots every day and, and those are uh, empty calories, high fat calories 
and they're artificial and so we see a lot of patients with resulting in gastritis, um, abdominal pain, all sorts of upper gastrointestinal complaints, indigestion, intolerance of other meals because their stomach is so irritated mm -hmm. with these meals. So in general, I'd like to tell my patients not to avoid all those meals. Well, it's uh, a lot to think about, but <laughs> definitely, I guess, the message is that you should, really should make like small changes throughout your life, and you know, hopefully, you know, avoid some of these major uh, problems in the long run. But uh, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Yes. Canales. It was really informative, and uh, you all are going to be having a uh, health fair here. Yes. Uh, early March. Yes. Open to the public. Yes, and it's going to be announced. To, uh, we're planning to announce it to the public, and we're hoping that uh, people can come and see our facility, meet our staff, and. Uh, it's all in an effort to raise awareness for colon cancer. March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month, so we feel it's our duty as a center and as physicians to alert the public about this very important health hazard. Excellent. So yeah, we'll, we will definitely uh, remind our readers about that coming up in early March. Um, so thank you, Dr. Canales, and uh, I am Kiros for LaSambe.com, um, talking about colon cancer, and, uh, a healthy colon. So we'll talk again soon, okay? We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Thank you.